Five years since we first introduced Cash App to the investor community at our last investor day. A lot has changed since then, and today you're going to hear from me on four key themes that now underpin our business. One, Cash App has built a social money network with viral characteristics through peer to peer payments. This network forms the basis of our low cost, massively scaled consumer distribution model. Two, we built an ecosystem and a compelling monetization engine by cross-selling many value-added services to our customers. Three, we instrument and operate Cash App's business through a simple equation to derive gross profit that we call the inflows framework. And four, we're focused on driving Cash App's business forward by investing in seven key development pillars. We're gonna dive deep into each of these four themes over the course of this presentation. First, I want to reacquaint you with Cash App's origin story as it sets the context for how Cash App contributes and ties back into Block's ecosystem of ecosystems. Let's get started. I joined Block nearly 12 years ago as our company's first product manager, and I was part of the early team that launched and scaled Square's first flagship product, the Square Card Reader. When it first launched, the card reader was a magical device that solved a painful problem for sellers. It helped sellers make a sale anywhere they were using a simple tool that they could carry around in their pocket. As Square expanded, we focused on additional ways that we could help sellers grow, and we realized that helping them connect with their customers was a great way to do it. At that time, we didn't have much of a relationship with our sellers' customers. We tried establishing relationships with these customers by communicating with them through digital receipts, and we even built one of the first digital mobile wallets that enabled customers to pay faster by opening a tab at Square Registers. These ideas were cutting edge, but ultimately ahead of their time. Then, in 2013, a few of us started hacking on Cash App. Back then, we called it Square Cash. It was a rogue project, and we had a simple idea. We wanted to let anyone send money to anyone else using the tools that they already had in their pocket, their debit card and their mobile phone. The simplicity of it reminded us a lot of the card reader, but it was built for consumers instead of sellers. And it worked for everyone, not just our sellers' customers. Our vision was to build a consumer ecosystem that was unconstrained from Square's ecosystem because we believed it could be bigger this way. We gave the project its own brand and a separate operating model with a vision to connect it back to Square and our sellers later. We could only help sellers connect with consumers if we had enough scaled consumer relationships to make a meaningful impact. This was the beginning of our ecosystem of ecosystems model. For Cash App, we were laser focused on creating something with epic consumer scale. It was ingrained in our culture. Everything we built was towards achieving a low cost customer acquisition model that could scale our network virally and eventually become massive. If we could scale while keeping our customer acquisition costs low, then we could invest money and focus on making all of the other elements like customer experience, brand, and the technology truly world-class. To achieve scale, we took inspiration from social networks. When people share photos and messages on social networks, these networks are able to grow fast and get big and for very low cost. A social network is more useful if your friends are using it. So early adopters encourage their friends to join, those friends invite their friends, and the network can scale virally. We saw the same potential in peer-to-peer -peer payments, and that's why we started there. We believed we could build a social money network that could become massive for very low cost, but our network needed an initial hook. We needed early adopters. So we started out by solving a problem that was so valuable 
that it didn't matter if people's friends weren't on the platform yet. When I was in college, I would periodically ask my parents to spot me $100 for food or gas until my next student loan deposit would hit. I found myself with a negative balance from overdraft charges, and the only way to get the money the same day was if my mom or dad agreed to physically walk into the local branch of my bank back home, wait in line, hand the teller paper money to pay off the overdraft fee, and then add a little extra so I could get dinner. If you handed the teller paper money, then the funds would post to the account instantly. The process took hours and it was frustrating. It ruined my day and it ruined my parents' day every time. So along with our partners, we pioneered a new way of moving money instantly between banks through Cash App. And people only needed a debit card to make it work. We called it Instant Deposit. In 2013, there were no other scaled services that allowed you to move money instantly this way. The experience was magic, and we knew it was something that people desperately needed. Now, with Cash App, you could download an app, link your debit card, type in a dollar amount, and enter someone's phone number, and tap send. The money would appear in the recipient's account at a completely different bank within seconds. It worked as fast as paper cash, but with way less hassle. Our early breakthrough with Instant Deposit helped us realize this was just one of the countless examples of how money and the broader financial system is broken for everyday people. Financial products are intimidating and unrelatable. They can be inaccessible, and money moves between them way too slow. With Cash App, we had an opportunity to fix these problems and contribute meaningfully to Block's overarching purpose of economic empowerment. If the economy is a machine, then money is the oil that makes it operate efficiently. We realized that the most direct path to driving economic empowerment broadly is by making money work better for people. We set out to redefine the world's relationship with money by making it more relatable, instantly available, and universally accessible. And this has been Cash App's mission ever since. Many of Cash App's early adopters were underserved people in the South who were digitally native and valued fast access to funds with instant deposit. They skewed lower income, and we believe cash flow management was essential for them. These early adopters started inviting their family and friends, just like a social network, and Cash App's network started growing virally throughout the South and up the Eastern Seaboard. People would either hear about Cash App from a friend or join because their friend sent them money. Then something unexpected started happening. Cash App started becoming part of the cultural lexicon. It was spreading through culture. Our customers were talking about Cash App a lot on social media. They started an organic movement called Cash App Friday, where members of the community would make payments to other members of the community in need. We began participating in this program after our customers started it. They even nicknamed our product for us. I mentioned earlier that we organically named our product Square Cash, referencing our company's name at the time, along with a reference to digital money that moved as fast as paper cash. Our customers thought Cash App better described what the service was. It was an app for digital cash, Cash App. So we decided to adopt this name officially. After this, mainstream music creators even started mentioning Cash App in their songs, and it was all organic. When music creators started referencing Cash App, we were surprised. But when you think about it deeply, it makes sense. We've been conditioned to think about money, and especially bank brands, as being corporate and untrustworthy. But on a fundamental level, there are a few things that are more core to our lifestyle than money. Money is emotional and raw. Most experiences and relationships in life are governed, at least to some extent, by money. We started to see this being reflected in the ways in which our brand was being referenced in culture, and we saw an opportunity to amplify it. So we developed a brand strategy to strengthen and promote what was already happening. Creators were building art around Cash App, so we support and partner with them. Some of these include Meg The Stallion, 100 Thieves, and Lil Nas X, just to name a few. We invest deeply in social media by building programs like giveaways that feel native to each platform and integrate our products. We built massive followings as a result, with more than 2 million followers on Instagram and 1.7 million followers on Twitter. We even have our own streetwear line, Cash by Cash App. Sometimes people question why a financial app would invest time designing a clothing line. It's because money is inherent to lifestyle. The next generation feels this, and they expect us to understand this about them. 
We invest in our brand because it softens the edges of Cash App's network as it expands organically by making each new customer that comes across the service more familiar and more likely to join. We support this network expansion further with more traditional forms of performance marketing, like direct response paid advertising through Google and Snapchat and referrals. Every new customer that joins Cash App has the potential to spark new micro-networks by inviting their friends or creating deeper engagement for the network at large. The multiplying effects of each new customer allows us to develop sophisticated performance marketing tactics that help us accelerate the growth of our network in strategic regions and demographics. And our customer acquisition formula is working. As of the end of March, there were 80 million annual actives who participated in a financial transaction on Cash App's network. And these customers are everywhere across the country. Cash App has achieved mass market, mainstream scale, and penetrated vast regions of the United States, with micro networks now forming in nearly every county nationwide. Cash App is no longer serving only underserved customers in the South. The network has had a chain reaction, jumping demographic boundaries across geographies, age groups, ethnicities, and income levels, just like a social network. We've ranked number one for finance apps across the App Store and Google Play since 2017, consistently beating out competition in every fintech category, such as mobile payment networks, neobanks, traditional banking, crypto trading, and brokerage. But Cash App is not just a mainstream mass market financial app. It was the number eight most downloaded app in the United States overall in 2021 alongside the largest and most frequently used consumer services in the world, like TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Because of our network-driven customer acquisition formula, we acquired each new transacting active in 2021 for $10 on average. This is a fraction of what other financial applications across our industry typically pay, and a minuscule fraction of what traditional finance institutions have historically paid to acquire a new customer. And this investment has earned an incredibly strong rate of return. On average, Cash App earned $60 worth of gross profit, net of peer-to-peer -peer expenses, over three years from every new monthly active that begins transacting on the network. This equates to a greater than 6x ROI over the three-year span. We believe our ability to monetize at such a strong rate is credited to our ecosystem and our ability to cross-sell many value-added services to our customers. We took inspiration from Square's ecosystem in developing Cash App's ecosystem strategy. With Square, we started out with a simple card reader and then built out adjacent services such as the point of sale system, inventory, loans, invoicing, and online store to name a few. Together, a full omni-channel commerce and financial services solution for sellers. We built a similar ecosystem around Cash App serving consumers with a broad suite of financial and commerce services. We started monetizing Cash App in 2016 by charging for instant deposit and business accounts. These two revenue streams are highly correlated to the usage of our core peer-to-peer -peer network. And over the past five years, the gross profit that we generate per active account has rapidly increased as we've methodically expanded Cash App's ecosystem beyond peer-to-peer -peer payments by building and cross-selling adjacent financial services to our customer base. With each new product category that we introduce, we have additional opportunities for monetization. More recently, earning spreads on Bitcoin trading and interchange fees on debit card spending. Greater product adoption from our customers has led to more money flowing into the ecosystem, increased engagement, and ultimately more gross profit per active account, reaching $47 on an annualized basis in Q4 of 2021. Next, I'll demonstrate the mechanics of how this ecosystem works, how it has led to a diversified and resilient business model, and how it is reinforced by other ecosystems within Block. The most defining characteristic of Cash App's ecosystem is that each of the services work together cohesively and the boundaries between them fade away. This allows us to move money between products instantly and invent entirely new product categories at the intersections. Here are some examples that will help you feel the power of the ecosystem. Peer-to-peer -peer is the foundation as it forms a tight network amongst our customers. When somebody sends money across the P2P network, it shows up in the recipient's balance instantly. 
and can be spent on her Cash App card the moment the sender taps send. She can even add a boost to the card purchase, our instant discounts program, partially funded by merchants. The savings is available in her balance immediately. This is a use case that I desperately needed in college and demonstrates how our network is starting to cross demographic boundaries between Gen Z and Gen X. Fractional stock trading, our Bitcoin exchange, are only one tap away from our banking solutions. When a customer's direct deposit arrives, they can choose to have a percentage automatically convert into Bitcoin, just like they might allocate a percentage into a savings account at a traditional bank. It's effortless and worry-free because funds move instantly between balances in Cash App. So if a customer has an unanticipated expense for the month and needs to tap into their savings, they can just sell a little Bitcoin and the dollars are available to spend at the grocery store on Cash App card in seconds. There's no more waiting three days for funds to settle and transfer to the place where you can actually make use of them. It's your niece's birthday and you forgot to get her a gift? Send her $100 worth of fractional stock through the peer-to-peer -peer network to kickstart her portfolio. She can keep the stock, trade it for a different one, or exchange it for dollars and have the money available to spend in three seconds on something else with a Cash App card. This is what we mean when we describe Cash App as an ecosystem. The services work together cohesively and each service is highly differentiated, which is why we believe it has an advantage over the competition. As an ecosystem, money can flow into Cash App through many different channels. And we found that the performance of our business is directly correlated to the amount of money that flows in. When a customer sends a peer-to-peer -peer payment, they bring money into Cash App from their external bank account and then send it across the network to a recipient. These funds can cycle throughout the ecosystem as customers use the same funds to send to other people in the network. When somebody receives money, the funds land in their stored balance, and we've developed many services that can adopt and utilize these funds. They can cash it out to their bank, withdraw paper money from an ATM, buy Bitcoin, buy stocks, make a purchase on the Cash App card, or even withdraw Bitcoin to another wallet across the blockchain. But money doesn't only flow into the system through peer-to-peer. -peer. Customers can provide their ACH and routing number to their employer and receive a direct deposit for their paycheck, deposit paper checks, visit a retail location like Walgreens to deposit paper money, take out a loan through Cash App Borrow, receive their tax refund, and deposit Bitcoin by receiving it from an external wallet across the blockchain. These inflows and outflows can also create connections across block and reinforce the product within the ecosystem of ecosystems. Employees of Square Sellers can receive their paycheck early by linking it directly to Cash App through Square Payroll. Cash App Pay allows customers to check out at Square Sellers faster through a QR code payment. And when customers withdraw Bitcoin across the Lightning Network, they're using the connections that we built through Spiral's Lightning Development Kit. Soon, customers will be able to check out with Afterpay's Buy Now, Pay Later through Cash App, and all of their repayments can be managed directly through their Cash App. The more products that our customers adopt, the more money they can bring in, and the more engagement we see, which can lead to network growth and greater gross profit. As money flows through the ecosystem, we selectively charge fees that are intended to be commensurate with the overall value we provide our customers. Our revenue streams are diversified across seven main channels, with the largest four monetization channels being instant deposit, interchange from Cash App Card, spreads on Bitcoin trading, and business transactions coming through the P2P network. Each of our four largest monetization channels made up more than 200 million in gross profit each during 2021. As I mentioned, the amount of money pulled into Cash App is directly correlated to the performance of our business, and therefore, we instrument and operate the business through a simple equation that we call the inflows framework. We believe this framework is the most useful method for understanding the key levers of Cash App's business and how to model it. Gross profit is equal to the number of active accounts times the volume of dollar inflows per active times the gross profit monetization rate applied to the inflows. And we can break down these top level drivers further into sub drivers. Actives is a function of new actives joining Cash App, retained actives, and actives we win back after they've gone inactive. 
The volume of inflows brought into the ecosystem by each active is driven by the number of products they adopt, our share of wallet relative to other products in the category, and the overall spending power of the active, which can be affected by things like government stimulus or tax refunds. Finally, gross profit monetization rate is a function of the fees that we charge and the mix of product usage across the ecosystem. To make this formula more tangible, here's how these top level drivers contributed to our Q1 results. In March, there are 46 million monthly active accounts that transacted on the Cash App platform. On average, each account brought $1,052 worth of inflows into the ecosystem. And in the first quarter, our gross profit monetization rate was 1.19% on these inflows. This led to $578 million worth of gross profit in Q1, excluding contributions from Afterpay. Now, let's shift gears to how we increase the key business levers in the inflows framework to grow the business. We're focused on driving Cash App forward by investing in the following development pillars. Community, financial services, crypto, operating system, trust, commerce, and global. When we innovate and develop improvements to Cash App service across each of these pillars, they can drive one or more of the key levers in the inflows framework, actives, inflows per active, and the monetization rate. Next, I'll walk you through how these strategic pillars drive the equation. Let's start with community. Peer-to-peer -peer payments forms the basis of our community development pillar because customers engage in financial transactions with other members of the Cash App community. When customers use peer-to-peer, -peer, they're not just transacting by themselves. They're inviting their friends, their family, and their coworkers to download Cash App so that they can send each other money. Peer-to-peer -peer is more useful for our customers the larger the community is, so our customers are naturally incentivized to bring more people into their network. We see opportunities to stitch many product categories beyond simply peer-to-peer -peer payments into the fabric of our community, which will ultimately strengthen our network, create viral effects, and can lead to stronger growth of monthly actives. We found that customer retention is directly correlated to the size of an active's network or number of other accounts they transact with. When looking at the fourth quarter of 2021 and first quarter of this year, we saw a 31 percentage point increase in retention for actives with a network size of four or more accounts compared to an active who only transacted with one other account. We can influence the number of connections that a given customer has by developing more opportunities in the product for our customers to connect with one another. Examples of products that we've developed to drive more connections between our customers beyond basic peer-to-peer -peer payments include Bitcoin peer-to-peer, -peer, stock gifting, family accounts, and even non-financial products like emoji payment reactions and payment notes. We're going to continue looking for more opportunities to build experiences that drive connections like these between our customers. Financial services is our second development pillar. By broadening and deepening our financial relationships with our customers across a wide set of categories, we provide more reasons for our customers to bring money into Cash App's ecosystem, which can drive stronger inflows per active account and more opportunities for monetization. Today, we're investing into financial services across four areas, Cash App card, deposits and transfers, credit, and investing. Let's start with Cash App Card, where we have achieved significant scale. In March, there were more than 15 million monthly actives that transacted using Cash App Card. And further, we saw two thirds of these monthly actives transacting each week. Customers are using their card to purchase a wide variety of products and services across categories such as retail, restaurants, grocery, travel, and recurring expenses like utilities. Cash App Card is typically the first product within our financial services suite that our customers adopt, and their engagement increases over time as they discover our additional offerings like direct deposit. Our vision is to make Cash App the banking platform of preference for all of our customers, and to do that, we're building out capabilities across deposits and transfers with a particular focus on direct deposit. We're in the early days of direct deposit adoption, and momentum is building. In March, we had 1.5 million monthly actives utilizing direct deposit, and we have seen recurring paycheck deposits 
from employers make up an increasing share of volume, up more than two and a half X year over year in March. We believe there's a large opportunity ahead to improve discovery and ease of use with features like seamless direct deposit switching through payroll integrations. We also have launched additional methods of deposit and transfers and features that customers would expect from a bank like FDI insurance, ATM withdrawals, ACH bill pay, paper money deposits, and check deposits, which have all been introduced more recently. We're also exploring how we can expand the utility we provide to customers through savings and money management. Moving to credit, where our focus is on providing simple, fair, and accessible credit products for our customers that promote financial health and avoid trapping them into a cycle of debt. Credit is a relatively new category for us, and Borrow is the first product that we've introduced. Borrow is a short-term lending product offering customers small loans up to $200 that customers can pay back in four regularly scheduled installments or as a percentage of what they receive into Cash App. Since launch, we've issued loans to more than 1 million accounts, and we've been disciplined about testing pricing and limits to understand repayment rates and how customers are using these funds. We're on our way to establishing a rock solid track record of effectively managing loss rates and driving positive unit economics. Later, you'll hear about how we plan on integrating Afterpay into the Cash App ecosystem and how we view Afterpay's Buy Now Pay Later installments product as a natural extension of the work that's already underway offering inclusive and fair credit products to Cash App customers. Lastly, on financial services, our stock brokerage product makes investing in the stock market relatable and accessible for regular people. When searching for stocks on Cash App, we lead with company names, which are familiar instead of tickers and are less intimidating for first-time stock investors. Since launching the product in late 2019, we've built out a rich suite of features such as auto buys, custom limit orders, news, price alerts, and key stats that have helped us expand from serving novice investors to moderately sophisticated retail investors. In March, there were 4 million accounts who either traded or were holding stock in Cash App. Cross-selling our suite of financial services is one of our most direct methods of increasing inflows per active account. When customers adopt our financial services products, we have seen a multiplier effect in the volume of inflows that they bring into the ecosystem above and beyond customers who use Cash App for peer-to-peer -peer payments. For direct deposit and borrow, we see the highest multiplier effect at 6.5 times and 4.5 times respectively. Direct deposit actives are likely receiving a recurring paycheck in their Cash App balance, which they then send to friends, spend through their Cash App card, or invest. For those utilizing Cash App card, we see them bringing in twice the amount of dollar inflows compared to a peer-to-peer -peer only active, as more of their spending is flowing through the app to fund card purchases. And with stocks, even though we don't monetize this product directly, we have still seen a noticeable difference in the volume of inflows brought in from these actives compared to the baseline peer-to-peer -peer active only profile. We have also seen a multiplier effect in our gross profit monetization rate above our baseline rate for peer-to-peer -peer customers as we cross sell additional financial services products. We have seen on average a 1.7 times multiplier effect on the monetization rate from customers who adopt stocks, cash app card, and borrow. Let's move into crypto. You'll hear more from other leaders across Block on our broader set of Bitcoin initiatives for the company later today. In this section, I'll share how we're thinking about crypto within Cash App and why investing in this pillar is critical for our customers, our business, and the industry at large. We spoke earlier about Cash App's mission to redefine the world's relationship with money by making it more relatable, instantly available, and universally accessible. We believe that there's no other technology more likely to redefine money than cryptocurrency, and Bitcoin more specifically. These technologies continue to be intimidating, unrelatable, and inaccessible to the average person, and Bitcoin currently moves too slowly across the blockchain to be practical for regular everyday transactions. This is where we think Cash App is uniquely positioned to add value. Bitcoin is also great for our business, as it's yet another reason for our customers to bring money into the ecosystem with multiple opportunities for monetization. 
So far, we've focused on developing two core product applications for Bitcoin and Cash App. We started in early 2018 with a simple Bitcoin exchange and custody solution that provides an on-ramp and off-ramp for Cash App customers to buy and sell Bitcoin with US dollars and a custodial account for them to store it securely without needing to keep track of their private keys. Our offering is differentiated based on speed and ease of use. Existing Cash App customers can dip their toe into Bitcoin within seconds and exchange dollars for Bitcoin in just a few taps. Since launching our Bitcoin exchange, which allows for buying and selling Bitcoin, we've added a rich set of investing features, including auto buys and custom limit orders, and compelling new trading and custodial experiences made possible by the tight integration with other products across Cash App's ecosystem. We allow customers to auto convert their paycheck into Bitcoin from direct deposits and earn instant Bitcoin rewards on Cash App card purchases. Our second area of focus is Bitcoin payments. Given our network scale, we believe Cash App can help Bitcoin evolve beyond an asset class to possessing real transactional utility, which is why we launched our offering in 2018 with the ability to deposit and withdraw Bitcoin across the blockchain. More recently, we've added the ability for customers to send Bitcoin across the Cash App network to any phone number or cash tag, creating an off-chain network for Bitcoin payments that settles instantly between 80 million annual active Cash App accounts. We also just announced that US customers can now send and receive Bitcoin on-chain to anyone with a compatible wallet via the Lightning Network. Typical transactions conducted directly on the Bitcoin blockchain can take upwards of 10 minutes, and now it's nearly instant with Cash App over the Lightning Network. This integration was made possible through the Lightning Development Kit, which was built by Spiral, another great example of how our ecosystem of ecosystem creates leverage and reinforces itself. It's remarkable the extent to which these Bitcoin experiences have resonated with our customers. Since launching Bitcoin and Cash App in 2018, we've had more than 10 million monthly actives buy Bitcoin within our app. And similar to what we see with our financial services product, Bitcoin monthly actives have brought in significantly more inflows to the ecosystem, nearly four times the amount in the first quarter than those who are using only peer-to-peer -to, -peer to send and receive money. This isn't because they're just buying Bitcoin. These customers are more engaged across the Cash App ecosystem overall. If you're buying and selling Bitcoin with Cash App, you have even more of a reason to be using our other products like Cash App Card or Direct Deposit because of the novel experiences that exist at the intersections. And we've seen a compounding factor here on the monetization rate. We charge a spread when customers buy and sell Bitcoin, and it's one of our highest monetization rate products. It's also a monetization lever where money isn't actually leaving the ecosystem. So we have the opportunity to monetize those inflows multiple times. Our fourth development pillar is trust. We aspire to earn the opportunity to serve customers with a broad suite of financial services by deepening our financial relationship with them, by increasing our share of wallet for each service, and expanding our customer base to serve older and higher income customer demographics. To earn this opportunity, we have to obsess over building and maintaining deep trust with our customers. If we're successful with our efforts here, we believe more customers will adopt our products, grow with us, and bring more money into the ecosystem to use the wider set of our offerings. We're currently focused on three target areas to earn and maintain our customers' trust. Access, customer service, and limits. Offering our customers with reliable, easy, and secure access to their accounts is essential when dealing with people's money. We have all had the experience where we've been locked out of an account and unable to access a critical service that we rely on. We're committed to ensuring that our customers never have to deal with this type of frustration, while ensuring that they have peace of mind knowing that their money is secure and protected. Next, we're committed to providing our customers with world-class customer service. Our support system must be reliable, and we're making investments to ensure that customers can get in touch with us when it's most convenient for them and through the channels that make it effortless whether that be social media, chat, or voice. 
We expect our support advocates to understand and navigate the nuances of the situations that our customers are dealing with. And we're investing in tools to surprise and delight customers so that we can resolve their problems in real time. Finally, we're focused on making sure that Cash App's limit system can scale to meet the needs of higher income customers. If a new customer wants to bring in hundreds of thousands of dollars into the ecosystem to trade on our Bitcoin exchange, we want there to be a path. Making this feel effortless at scale will require a best-in-class identity verification system and anti-money laundering program. And it's clear that the limits we put on our customers today can be a blocker from bringing more inflows into the app. When you look at our actives that have reached the highest limit tier, they brought in six times the amount of inflows compared to our lowest limit tier active in the first quarter. We think there's tremendous upside to expanding this type of access for a wider set of customers. Now, turning to our operating system pillar. With Cash App's operating system, we're building the foundation for Cash App to become an infinitely scalable super app. We're building up the shared frameworks, applications and systems that can allow us to scale to new services, trigger broader engagement across our offering, and drive brand cohesion across our product experience. I'll walk you through why this is important and what we're optimizing for in the future to allow greater engagement within Cash App. Prior to 2019, Cash App had a very simple interface. Our iconic peer-to-peer -peer payment pad dominated the Cash App experience with features like Bitcoin and Cash App card varied due to constraints in technical and design architecture. This overly simplistic navigation severely limited our ability to drive incremental product adoption beyond peer-to-peer -peer payments. In late 2019, we expanded Cash App's navigational architecture to be a more extensible interface with five tabs. We were able to display the full product suite that Cash App had to offer in a more intuitive and organic navigational flow. When we made this change, we saw a dramatic difference in attach rate for some of our products. Here, we looked at two cohorts before and after the tabs roll out from June and October 2019, and the adoption uplift based on a cohort's attach rate in the first two months of onboarding. Cash App Card and Bitcoin saw a 17% and 25% uplift as they were previously only one layer removed, but Direct Deposit saw a 57% lift as this was two layers removed from the home screen. While the tabs navigation enabled us to broaden our offering to a wider suite of services beyond peer-to-peer, -peer, we're again reaching the limits of what our current architecture can support, which puts emphasis on just five products, deposits, cash app card, peer-to-peer -peer payments, stocks, and Bitcoin. This architecture won't scale going forward and inherently places an upper bound on the number of products, offers, and recommendations that we can meaningfully surface to our customers. You can see here as an example that Borrow is competing with a long list of other products, not well surfaced in the core navigational flow within the app today. It's nested in a list view, which limits discovery and engagement. We view today's limitation as a significant opportunity. As part of operating system, we're developing a new technical and design architecture for Cash App, placing an emphasis on connecting our products together in ways that's intuitive and seamless for our customers and scalable for our business. Our goal is to meaningfully increase cross-sell of additional financial services and create more connections between customers within the Cash App community, including businesses. A major element of this future vision is search and discovery. We'll make searching for people and businesses across the network part of the primary navigational flow of the app. We believe that search can unlock more organic opportunities for discovery and suggestions and help strengthen the Cash App network through more serendipitous engagement. We'll also be investing more heavily into history, evolving it from serving as primarily a transactional ledger today to a rich activity feed showcasing relevant content that's occurring across the ecosystem with additional opportunities for suggestions and discovery of adjacent products and connections. Finally, we're building a home that organizes all of our customers' money, assets, and financial services into one place that allows for a more streamlined and intuitive use of the services they engage with and a place to showcase and learn about the new services that we offer that they've not yet adopted. 
As this operating system takes shape, we're beginning to think about each of our services that live within the ecosystem more like apps in and of themselves, or mini applets. Products such as Bitcoin, banking, stocks, credit, and even experiences like stock gifting could theoretically be standalone companies if they lived outside of the Cash App ecosystem with early to late stage VC funding. These products are at various phases of maturity and scale, some being more nascent, while others are serving millions of customers and generating hundreds of millions of dollars of gross profit. We believe that this applet architecture and the operating system that houses it gives each of our existing services and the new ones that we create the space and opportunity to blossom into their full potential and compete as first class players in their category. Hopefully this new architecture and applet model helps paint a more vivid picture for how we think about integrating Afterpay into Cash App's ecosystem. Afterpay does have its own app today and Cash App's operating system will aim to make it natural and seamless to integrate all of the functionality that currently exists in the Afterpay app into Cash App. We're gonna dive deeper into Afterpay in the next section and explain how the integration can help supercharge Cash App's entry into commerce and bring us back full circle to the original intent behind why we started building Cash App in the first place, to help sellers make a sale by more deeply connecting with customers. This is why commerce is our sixth development pillar. We're focused on four primary product areas within commerce. First, business accounts, or what we've historically called cash for business. Second, cash app pay. Third, offers and advertising, which you all may be familiar with to an extent with Boost. And fourth, Afterpay. We're gonna focus our discussion here on the first three categories, as we'll have a fulsome deep dive on Afterpay in the next section where I'll be joined by Nick and Ant, the co-founders of Afterpay and Square's lead, Alyssa. When we started Cash App, it was born out of the desire to build an ecosystem for consumers so that we could ultimately help sellers make a sale. This is what our commerce focus is all about. Our vision is to give businesses a home on Cash App and even more, a platform that they're incentivized to invest in. By creating a business profile, these businesses can surface relevant information to customers on Cash App, whether that's sharing a popular option at their cafe or simple actions like Order Now that can link customers to partner websites and seamlessly authenticate them. With Cash App Pay, we're continuing to scale our payment network capabilities with the goal of making Cash App the most loved way to pay. Currently, we're live with Square sellers using Register and online but we're building a sales team that can focus their efforts on achieving the greatest possible breadth of Cash App Pay acceptance at merchants. We're first starting with Afterpay merchants, and we're excited to share that Dick's Sporting Goods, Shein, Savage by Fenty, Finish Line, ASOS, ThreadUp, and JD Sports have all signed up to integrate Cash App Pay into their platforms. We're also looking to welcome several other enterprise sellers in the weeks ahead will be launching Cash App Pay as a new payment method. For offers and ads, we're building a fully-fledged merchant-funded offers platform scaled up from Boost and integrated with Afterpay's ads and affiliate engine. In the first quarter, we sent more than 350,000 leads to Afterpay merchants. Our investments into search and discovery will help supercharge this effort, and we see immense opportunity in this space on the horizon. While Afterpay can be a major accelerant for us in furthering our commerce efforts in the United States, we believe it can also be an accelerant for Cash App's final development pillar, which is global. You'll hear more from Nick and Ant about how Afterpay is scaling a global commerce network with meaningful traction so far in eight countries. Afterpay's home market is Australia with 3.4 million annual active consumers, 71,000 sellers, and greater than 10% consumer market penetration for buy now, pay later. Afterpay has been able to leverage their scale and relationships with sellers in Australia to propel them into global markets. And this cross-border effect started with the United States. Urban Outfitters was Afterpay's first US seller, and they launched with them in the US after seeing increased order sizes and higher repeat frequency from consumers in Australia. Many Australian sellers followed suit and the global network was formed. A 
As sellers activated in the US, Afterpay was able to leverage the integrations to scale to 13 million annual active consumers in the market, making the US Afterpay's largest and fastest growing country. This same cross-border effect has helped Afterpay achieve meaningful traction in New Zealand, the UK, and Canada. Today, Cash App has relatively less traction outside of the United States, our home market. We operate Verse, a leading regional peer-to-peer -peer service in Spain with approximately 450,000 monthly actives, and Cash App's core peer-to-peer -peer service is used by 160,000 monthly actives in the United Kingdom. Cash App has not yet leveraged cross-border effects to the same extent as Afterpay, although we see a lot of potential. Consumers can transact across US and UK borders for free between Cash App accounts, and in March, more than half of the payment volume processed by consumers in the United Kingdom was between a UK and a US-based account. This cross-border, peer-to-peer effect has been a catalyst for Cash App's expansion in the UK, and we think there are opportunities to expand into new markets around the world, leveraging cross-border payments from our US consumer base and through a deeper integration with Afterpay. Going forward, we're putting a priority and emphasis on expanding into global markets where we can leverage cross-border effects. Our US consumer base is strong and thriving, and there's demand for US consumers to send payments across borders to more markets around the world. As we launch Cash App in new markets, one of the core benefits to these new global customers will be access to receive payments for free from our US customer base and vice versa. We believe this cross-border network will be a meaningful strategic advantage. Finally, as we integrate Afterpay's commerce engine into Cash App, we'll be able to leverage Afterpay's distribution around the world to launch Cash App's peer-to-peer -peer network in Afterpay's markets. Over time, our vision is to create one cohesive and interoperable global network where customers experience no borders and can transact through peer-to-peer -peer using any number of global currencies or crypto. Utilize Cash App's cohesive suite of financial services, search and discover sellers around the world, and shop all through Cash App. We have an opportunity to redefine the world's relationship with money on a truly global scale. And this is the focus of our global development pillar. You heard a lot of detail from me today, and you certainly have a lot to digest. To summarize, there are four critical points to take away from this presentation that will help you understand the nuances of Cash App's business and operating model. First, Cash App has built a social money network with viral characteristics through peer-to-peer -peer payments. This network forms the basis of our low-cost, massively scaled consumer distribution model. Second, gross profit per active has steadily increased over time, and our strong monetization engine is credited to our ecosystem and our ability to cross-sell many value-added services to our customers. Third, we instrument Cash App's business through a simple equation that we call the inflows framework. Gross profit is equal to the number of active accounts times the volume dollar of inflows per account times the gross profit monetization rate applied to the inflows. And finally, we're focused on driving Cash App's business forward by investing in community, financial services, crypto, trust, our operating system, commerce, and global expansion. Each of these pillars correlate to driving one or more of the key variables in our gross profit equation. I appreciate you listening and sincerely hope you're walking away with a deeper understanding of the power of Cash App's business model. Thank you so much. We're back live with Brian Grasadonio. Brian, how are you doing? Great. Hi, Jack. How are you? There's a few people on the internet talking about your outfit in the video. The yeah. jumpsuit. I see that you're wearing a similar jumpsuit, different color. How can people get this fashion if they desire Anybody it? Anybody can get this fashion at shop.cash.app. It's part of our uh, our second line, for, uh, Cash by Cash App, which is our latest streetwear line uh, from, uh, from Cash App. I saw somebody on the internet references as a dress. It's actually a jumpsuit, pants jumpsuit. connected to a top. That's a jumpsuit. Well, you wear it well. Um, so Brian, you've, you've been, you were our first product manager at the company. Uh, and apart from me, you've been here the longest. Um, I asked Alyssa this question, but you have even more context. What, 
What are you most proud of that we've done over the years as a full company, not just as Cash App, but um, as a full company? And what were some of our biggest missteps that you wish we would have corrected? Yeah, I think um, I think what I'm most proud of is the culture that we've built. And if I think about how Cash App was created, if I think about what we're doing now with our new emerging initiatives like TBD and Spiral and, and Tidal, um, these initiatives are possible because we've built a culture of institutionalizing entrepreneurship. So when I joined when I joined Block Square at the time in 2010, you know, I assumed I'd be here for three or four years. I assumed that I'd leave and I assumed that I'd start my own company. And then in 2013, um, you know, we were given a platform and a couple of us, you know, me and Robert Anderson started hacking on hacking on Cash App. It was a rogue project. And we were able to develop a framework um, that that kind of protected the innovation, protected the creativity within the organization. We created a firewall between us and the rest of the organization to make sure that we were able to take risks and invent in all the same ways that we were we were able to do when we were, you know, five people in, in your apartment. And so, you know, giving giving new businesses uh, the space to blossom, uh, to build brands, to build culture. Um, to me, I think that that's how you that's how that's why the ecosystem is possible. Um, we've been able to create startups within our startup and foster a culture of entrepreneurship, which I frankly haven't seen really anywhere else. Even if you look at other companies that have have businesses that are as diversified with distinct brands like ours, um, you know, there's some major conglomerates that have that. It almost always happens through uh, through acquisition. Uh, and so I think that the culture that we built is really is really world class. Um, I think in terms of missteps. I don't have any, I guess there's a couple. Um, I think with Cash App, you know, what we got an opportunity to do was, you know, we were kind of kind of born out of the same culture, but we got an opportunity to kind of retrospect on the things about Early Square that we loved and adopt 70% of those and then look at the things about Early Square that we thought we could have done better, uh, whether that was, you know, how we, how we approached things, how we recruited. And... Um, and I just think that that ability to create different cultures uh, allows us to bring those learnings back into other parts of the organization and learn. It's a self-reinforcing organization that that isn't dependent on any one person. It's a culture that can sustain for you know hundreds of years. So um, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, I, I agree. So um, at our last investor day five years ago, Cash App was barely mentioned. It was it wasn't even called Cash App at that point. It was called Square Cash, I yep. believe. Uh, I think we mentioned it five times in the presentation, and that was um, a little bit more than we mentioned it during our IPO. So, looking back, if you were to, if if we gave more space um, to Cash Up in that presentation, what would you, what would you want to tell investors and shareholders more of? And and in this particular investor day, what's the one thing you want them to walk away with about Cash Up? Yeah, man. Um, the thing that I think I didn't even fully appreciate back then um, was was you know we we talked in the presentation a lot about Cash App being a, a social money network, and it has an ability to scale you know virally. Every single person that comes in is incentivized to bring more people into the ecosystem because um, you know the service works better if if the if there's a larger community. The thing the, the main thing that's different about um, you know. Our, our network or our social money network based on peer-to-peer -peer payments versus a traditional social network where you know you express yourself through through text or photos or videos is it just takes longer to gestate these networks you know people early on when they're using peer-to-peer -peer, um, as, a, as a baseline utility with friends and family it, it starts off as you know twice a month three times a month four times a month whereas a social network you can kind of engage 20 times a day but the network has a way of just stating over a longer period of time. So it took us it took us a few years before we were really growing virally at, at scale, where I think even we understood the power of what the network would ultimately become. And um, and now, you know, you're at this scale now. We have 46 million monthly actives, 80 million accounts uh, over the last year. And, and the viral effect is still there. It's still there. And we're just compounding off of a larger base. So I think as we I think the thing to, to think about going forward is is around global expansion you know global expansion is one of our key seven development pillars it's a really key ingredient in our recipe but uh but just patience patience and realizing that these networks do take a while to gestate uh but the underlying mechanics of how the network is scaling um are there and so that, that's that's what i would just kind of ask people to to understand um because you know cash app is primarily 
you know, we have, we have really strong in the United States, but we started in 2013 and here we are in 2022 and we're, we're kind of really just getting started there. So, um, that'd probably be my, my, um, my thing for people to, to take away. So I think we're going to take a five minute break and then we're going to bring you and Alyssa back to talk about Afterpay. Amazing. So thank you.